So we're here in the quarry currently. Um, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's not very good access to where we are. And uh, what we're gonna do is discuss uh, an incident that's happened in a demonstration of some equipment where there's been a landslide. So there's been a landslide. Um, there's been multiple uh, people uh, injured. There are people from different countries, so language is an issue. Um, there's machinery trapped, there's people trapped. Um, and we're going to talk about what would happen next within the emergency services to see what would happen to call a major incident. So if this has happened, so over here there's been uh, a demonstration, uh, the quarry face has, has collapsed, maybe two or three uh, machines are covered, there's people around those machines been injured. At what point, from the first aider's point of view, making that phone call or the person on the site here, they're going to be in a panic. They're going to just, you know, how are you going to calm that person down to get the information that you really need? Well, certainly the call, taker, call takers are trained to get that information and, and calm the, uh, the caller down because um, we need, obviously, the important information out. And they, they're trained to, to listen to keywords as well. Certainly the, the numbers of patients involved, the problem nature and where the location is all go into the mix to get an idea of what's going on on site. Um, obviously it's valuable that we get that information as quick as we can and certainly the location but in times of, of stress people get uh, excited and uh, drawn into other things so we just need to get that information as quick as we can. And obviously here mobile phone signal in down there is probably going to be zero so maybe this person not even on site, <laughs> not, not right down there they're looking at it. So at what point would you then say you've got that call, maybe then multiple calls, and you now realise this is, this is something very serious, you know, you've maybe got 20, 30 people potentially injured. Um, how would that trigger it from an ambulance control point of view to get everything here? Well, certainly from a, a control room point of view, once we've got that information, that will be escalated into, within the control room to the duty managers and above, and the decision will be made, obviously, with the amount of casualties and the, instance, and the number of resources required, uh, that will determine on whether that goes to a major incident um, or a major incident standby. Um, it's important to get the number of casualties correct and the location because those are the two vital bits of information that we need from a control room perspective. Uh, once we've got the location we will send the assets to uh, the location but we, we still need to get um, more information of what's going on so certainly when the first crew arrives or the first responder arrives we sort of need a sort of window snapshot of what's going on and we need updates through a methane process um, to gain information on what's happening. So what about the other calls you're getting because the life is not going to stop just because you've got a major incident here. What about the, the other calls? Are they going to be downgraded or, or how would they No, work? they would still have to be managed, but obviously we would find assets, uh, whether it was um, help from other services or we had the resources within uh, service to send to the location. And would the whole incident be controlled on site or would it be at your control centre or would the control... The, 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 centre effectively moved on site? As well obviously as the incident progresses there will be resources sent to manage the scene at the scene but the, the information will go back to the control room. Once we've got a, an effective incident commander on the ground then all information would pass through him and then to control and then the resources would be sent on his request mm. or her request. Mm. So at what point does it switch from you know a possible or a standby situation for a major incident to an actual well, if an ambulance crew arrives on scene or it's a, 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 a manager uh, in a car, they can declare a major incident standby or a major incident declared depending on what they see. Now, those two can effectively be moved up or moved down depending on, on what's going on. Suddenly, from a major, in, major incident standby, that we have resources or there's a predetermined pre response for each category. We also inform the hospitals as well of, if it's on a standby, so they're in a make ready situation. Now, if a, an incident commander arrives on scene and declares that it's, it doesn't warrant a declared major incident, then we'll stay at that standby and work at that. But if he arrives on scene and what's going on on the information at hand that he's got, that he declares a major, a major incident, then, then that will happen. And then there's another predetermined ass assets to go to that scene as well.